Every story comes with an angle. But what is an angle? Well, if you want to write about, say, a new treatment against Alzheimer's disease, you can choose to focus on the what. What is it? What does the treatment do? And what does it cost? You can also choose an angle focusing on the who. Who invented it? Who is he or she? And if he or she is interesting enough, you can even write a Hollywood-style hero's journey about him or her. You could also center your story on the overall statistics of the number of lives saved annually. Or you could portray a single patient and her fight against the disease, which now got some new perspectives. The hook is often part of the lead, but it is different from the lead in the sense that the hook provides the justification for the story to be written. It makes the story opportune and timely. Say you want to write a background science story about innovations in artificial intelligence. Which hook will make your audience feel that the story is timely and relevant? Well, maybe a reference to a recent controversy or to a new app using AI will do it. The nut graph is shorthand for the nutshell paragraph. Normally, it is the second paragraph in your news story, right behind the lead. It condenses the who and the what and the when into a nutshell. Nut graphs are especially important to have when you write leads to create interest rather than to summarize. Let's look at an example. Imagine your lead is the following. Have to solve a problem? Try taking a nap. This lead is fun, intriguing. Yeah, what is it about? Well, now the nut graph comes to your rescue. It says, researchers led by Sarah Mednick, an assistant professor of psychiatry at the University of California, San Diego, gave 77 volunteers word association tests on the three before and after conditions and so on. These nutshell paragraphs are vital. You need to get them right with all the accurate names and titles and places and where's and when's. And they need to be there in full length and glory, even though they can be quite annoying to write and to read. But without a nut graph, impatient readers may wonder, what is the point of this? And drift away, no matter how clever your lead is. If you, on the other hand, have written a summarizing lead, your nut graph may not be needed or may just need to supplement any of the five W's missing from the lead or it may provide some background information or add a supporting quote. The details are in the main bulk of your text. They include arguments, controversies, evidence, quotes, support, logic, and possible consequences of the findings. In addition, science stories usually have some explaining to do about how the researchers came to their discovery and how they worked with their data. How details are really important in science writing, because the readers of science stories generally are very curious and expect all open questions to be answered. Editors, on the other hand, tend to cut out the how details, because for them all the important things have been said already in the beginning. So they regard them as surplus stuffings, nice to have but okay to throw out. Endings are almost as important as the lead, but science writers tend not to prioritize them. The quick and easy way out for most news writers is to end with a good quote, which provides a comprehensive conclusion and somehow gives a sense of objectivity. It lets the writer get out of the way. But the quote as an ending is overused to the point of cliché. So my recommendation would be that when you search for an ending to your story, your goalpost should be something which you know will stay with the reader for a while. A memorable truth or a surprising perspective or a catchy phrase that leaves a lasting impression in the reader's mind. It might be very well be a mesmerizing quote designed to let the reader's head explode. But it might equally well be a witty quip or a reflective afterthought which brings the reader back down to earth and tells him that science might be interesting and fun, but life goes on.
The most common way by which journalists put together all these elements of a news story is the inverted pyramid. The inverted pyramid helps you to arrange the facts in news stories quickly and efficiently. You don't want to use it on every story, but it's an essential tool in every reporter's toolbox. The reason it is called an inverted pyramid is that it illustrates the order of importance. The widest part at the top represents the most substantial, interesting and important information the writer means to convey to the reader. The lower portion illustrates that other material should follow in the order of diminishing importance. At the top we have the lead, the hook, the knot graph and all the answers to the five W's. In the middle goes the meat, the how, the quotes, the arguments and the context. The tail contains all the rest, which is nice to have but expendable and also known to be read by less than 10% of all the readers who see the title. You probably already have guessed what the purpose of such a structure is. It is twofold. First, readers can leave the story at any point and understand it even if they do not have all the details. Second, if there is not enough space in the newspaper, editors can cut the text from the bottom without destroying too much. In fact, the inverted pyramid has its origin in telegraph reporting in the 19th century, where limited time and space created a strong need for an effective and low-cost type of communication. Writers across the board have a love-hate relationship with the inverted pyramid. Its supporters say that it is extremely useful and recognizable. You'll find it on the front and inside pages of most newspapers as well as in stories distributed worldwide by the Associated Press, by Reuters and other news services on the internet. Its critics say that the inverted pyramid is outdated, unnatural, boring, artless and probably the reason for the declining readership of newspapers. It is definitely true that the inverted pyramid is the opposite of a good story. Instead of having a beginning, a middle and an end, it just organizes facts. The inverted pyramid is also very different from academic texts, which are organized around certain methods by which to test new ideas. Despite these complaints, the inverted pyramid survives because very often indeed people just want the facts. Not all writers are suited for fact-based news writing. Especially prospective fiction writers have problems with this style because it can become quite boring and formulaic. Take the American novelist Kurt Vonnegut. He often said he had to be a fiction writer because he wasn't good at anything else. He was not good at being an employee. Back in the mid-1950s, he was employed by Sports Illustrated, briefly, because they thought that by employing a real, science, real fiction writers, they would get some better reporting. Vonnegut went to work, was asked to write a short piece on a racehorse that had jumped over a fence and had tried to run away. Vonnegut stared at the blank piece of paper all morning and then he typed the horse jumped over the fucking fence and then he walked out self-employed again. Okay, although basic news stories are quite formulaic in their structure, just like books they too need to be rewritten. Publishing a text without rewriting is like walking out of your home in underwear. It is not pretty, usually. But how do you become a good rewriter? Well, you should start by becoming a good reader. Most people know when they read a good text. You should know why a text is good, because then you can use the ideas for developing your own style. Here we have Charles Dickens writing Hard Times. And it really can be hard times to write and rewrite. I have listed a few rules of thumb by which you can improve your text, courtesy of George Orwell. Never use a metaphor, simile or other figure of speech which you are used to seeing in print. Never use a long word where a short one will do. If it is possible to cut a word out, always cut it out. 
Never use the passive when you can use the active. Never use a foreign phrase, a scientific word or jargon if you can think of an everyday English equivalent. Break any of these rules sooner than saying anything barbarous. And again, when you decide to become a science news writer, you will not want to reveal yourself. You will want to reveal the wonders of science and you will convey the creative ways by which scientists try to reveal the truth about the universe. But you will have to accept the impersonal sterility of journalistic reporting, at least to some degree. Over time it will become easier and you will see that the inverted pyramid as a format will help you to develop critical thinking, to analyze events and to synthesize their meaning, which are the foundation of clear thinking and writing. Thank you for watching. See you next time.